such a pleasure to be here and uh, you know have this opportunity of sharing my thoughts on what should be a blueprint for a future ready bengaluru i must thank the deccan herald uh, publication for this uh, endeavor of having this summit of focusing on what we can do with our city and as you know i have always been an evangelist for bangalore as a city of the future i do sincerely believe that we have everything that it takes to be this futuristic city um we always boast of the 2.1 million software engineers which is the largest population of software engineers in a given city or a given region in the planet i think uh, we are the wealthiest city in the country i think we have a middle income uh, a level of uh, per capita income which i think is extremely something that we can all be proud of uh, most recently karnataka topped the gst charts in the country showing yet again namaskara sir um uh, showing yet again that we have this great economic leadership in the country and i also believe that we have the potential of delivering a trillion dollar economy just from karnataka by 2040 if we actually put our minds to it so against this backdrop i'd like to really share my thoughts about what it will take to make bengaluru our city that we are so proud of future ready when it comes to 2040 what is future readiness so let me start by saying that tokyo recently topped uh, a global ranking of being the most future ready city in the world and it was followed by hangzhou helsinki tallinn and taipei after an you know basically there were 200 global cities that were evaluated by this research firm called um, a, a thought lab that basically assessed these cities on a set of metrics that looked at um the ability of cities to be smart sustainable inclusive and resilient with the ability to meet the evolving needs of citizens and businesses for the next 20 years and so this is what we need to think about as a city of the future our future readiness for the next 20 years you know 2040 is a great target how are we going to be future ready so if we want to really build bengaluru as this future ready city obviously we have to be smart sustainable inclusive and resilient and in order to do that in my view what is it that we need to look at i think we really need to look at a city that has a good quality of life and when we talk about a good quality of life we are talking about clean air clean water obviously good mobility and finally it's also about having a sustainable business model and in order to do that i do believe that we have everything that it takes to make this happen we have every technology available to us to enable this to happen and what do i mean by that i think we need to focus on smart sensors real time data analytics artificial intelligence and of course green energy to make us future ready and i believe inclusive innovation needs to be at the heart of a future ready bengaluru and one thing i can definitely proudly say is that bengaluru is a city of citizens for citizens and by citizens in every sense of the word and i think it's important for this all stakeholders of our city 
to come together to make sure that we have an action plan for th this city of the future. And why do I say all this is possible? It's because I think we are home to some of the best scientific, academic and research institutions and talent, which is what is required for cities of the future and future readiness. We need knowledge and a creative scientific temper to really leverage all that is available to us for future readiness. And I believe we have it. We are fortunate enough to have this. So when we talk about this future ready city, obviously it's about a pollution free environment where quality of air is going to be extremely important. So emission levels are something that we need to measure and track all the time. And that's where sensors come into play. That's where real-time data analytics come into play. And that's where AI comes into play, where we can actually tell ourselves where the black spots are, where the bad air quality is uh, really something which we need to look at. The second aspect, of course, is seamless mobility. And when I talk about mobility, it's not just vehicular mobility, it's pedestrian mobility. This has to be a walking city. This has to be a cycling city. This has to be a city of public transport. This has to be a city where cars and trucks move in a very smooth, seamless manner. So it's about having a smart mobility network, which is what we all want to really focus on. And I really want to thank the Chief Minister and the Government of Karnataka for announcing the comprehensive Bangalore Mobility uh, uh, Land uh, Authority that we've all been talking about. Having this comprehensive uh, mobility uh, network, this authority that will actually govern all this in a seamless way. So I think that is a very, very important aspect of mobility. And finally, it's about having 24 by 7 safety surveillance. We have to be a safe city. Future, a city of the future and a future ready city has to also be a very safe city. And in order to do that, again, we need technology that makes us a safe city. Now, having said that, I'd like to now turn to some of the aspects that enable us to be a smart city. And of course, fundamental to this is the fact that Bengaluru occupies a special place in the history of science in India, especially as it developed over the 20th century. I just want to share with you some vignettes about how this happened. One is, of course, about the Tata Institute which really was the brainchild of J.N. Tata, who uh, envisioned a modern research institution in India when he set up the IISC in 1909. And as you know, uh, over the, uh, you know, over 100 years of its history, it actually became the most eminent scientific institution in the country, and it continues to be that way. And it has kept up with cutting edge technology over this time. Similarly was the uh, genesis of NIMHANS, which of course started off as, uh, as uh, uh, the Bangalore Lunatic Asylum, which was founded in 1847 and uh, rechristened as the Mysore Government Mental Hospital in 1925 and then took birth as NIMHANS in 1974 from the amalgamation of the mental health a mental hospital and the All India Institute of Mental Health. And today, NIMHANS is the most premier institution when it comes to neurosciences. So again, that's something which we are very proud of. Similarly, the National Aeronautical Research Laboratory, which was set up in literally the stables of the palace of the Maharaja of Mysore in Bengaluru, was converted to the National Aeronautical Laboratory under CSIR in 1960. And in 1993, it was rechristened the National Aerospace Laboratories, given the focus on space, in, uh, thanks to ISRO. Of course, additionally, we have a large number of research institutes, starting with ISRO, um, whether it's uh, 
the NCBS, uh, the uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, the Indian in Statistical Institute, the Raman Research Institute, the Institute for Stem Cell and Regenerative Me Medicines, and the list just goes on and on. And it is these institutions that have created the very strong temper for science, research, innovation, and technology, which has really allowed uh, Bengaluru to be the IT and biotech capital of the country. You know, I do want to say that what all these institutions actually catalyzed was the public sector, uh, you know, in, in uh, industries with giants such as BEL, BHEL, HMT, of course, ISRO and HAL, which all benefited from these scientific institutions. And it is the talent that we actually got in these public sector in, uh, you know, institutions that also then enabled a very vibrant private sector to also flourish. And I think the scientific temper and the creative temper that we have created through all these institutions created first generation entrepreneurs who are willing to basically invest in science and technology. And that's why you have Bengaluru as the ITBT capital of India. Whether it's Infosys, whether it's Wipro, whether it's Mindtree, whether it's our own company, Biocon, Syngene, and others, we have all basically taken the bold bet of investing in science and technology. And that's what makes Bengaluru very special and very future ready. Because if you don't have a creative culture, if you don't have a temper of science and technology, I don't think you can be ready for the future. And you cannot be prepared for the future. So I really believe that this is what has enabled us to be at the forefront of science and technology. The other aspect of science and technology is that we have, as a result of this initial success, we have many international companies who have also set up their R&D centers and innovation centers in the last several decades. In 1985, Texas Instruments became the first multinational to set up a development center in Bengaluru, paving the way for many more MNCs uh, to follow. Today, it's great to see that India accounts for more than 45% of global in-house centers in the world, and Bengaluru is home to over 400 uh, GICs. These GICs, which began as cost centers, or, or centers that leverage the cost based in India, are today now becoming key revenue drivers, generating sales and winning deals for these companies. Top multinationals such as Intel, Google, IBM, Microsoft, Walmart, Adobe, Cisco, Rolls-Royce, Boeing, and many others have set up their global in-house centers in Bengaluru and have developed very cutting-edge innovative products for global markets. From advanced software for Tesla, BMW, Audi, to new chip designs at Intel, global companies are leveraging uh, the Indian talent, the talent in our city of Bengaluru to drive cutting-edge innovation. And thanks to the efforts of successive governments in Karnataka to drive close coordination between academia, industry, and government, we have these, this unique vision group model, which no other state and very few countries in the world can boast of. And these vision groups in IT, BT, nanoscience, in uh, uh, smart uh, in startups and other emerging areas is what has made us so preeminent in being a city of the future i think bangalore also has every imaginable metric to measure the startup ecosystem the city plays host to more than 11000 startups of which 1700 or uh, 10 startups are funded. And this funding has raised almost $73 billion between 2014 and 2022. And nearly half of the total startup funding in India 
has gone to startups in Bengaluru. This is the power of the city when it comes to talent, when it comes to innovation, when it comes to creative opportunities. Bengaluru's startup success story is also reflected in the fact that the city has 40 of India's 108 unicorns and 43 of India's 100 centaurs, the most in both the categories. Some of the biggest names in India's startup ecosystem like Flipkart, Swiggy, Razorpay and many, many others are all based in our city. And the city is perhaps very unique in having created this ecosystem of institutions of scientific and technological excellence which have had a broad impact on both industry and society. Worldwide, such concentrations of knowledge have driven wealth creation and that's why I remain so optimistic about Bengaluru and Karnataka because Bengaluru drives Karnataka with, through the science and technology powerhouse that we have created in our city. And prominent examples of cities that actually something that we should benchmark our wealth creation potential to is the Bay Area, the Boston area, and of course, Cambridge. Even Estonia is becoming such a country that is pursuing the power of technology. And a city once considered a retiree's paradise is now today buzzing with an infectious kind of intellectual energy. Bengaluru is at the forefront of using technology for better delivery services. Uh, and what better example than Terminal 2 of Karnataka International Airport, which I think is a great testimony of what we are doing in terms of being future ready. Built in collaboration with Amazon Web Services and Polygon, we have the Bangalore Airport has created the Metaport, which offers an immersive three-dimensional virtual experience of the newly launched Terminal 2. Travelers and the public can log on to a website and virtually tour and navigate the new state-of-the-art terminal using their smart devices. The Metaport is an outcome of the Joint Innovation Center, or the GIC, announced in April 2022 by BIL, AWS and Intel. The JIC focuses on driving the development and adoption of digital solutions in aviation. And I think this is very far reaching. This is very future, futuristic and, and this is an aspect of future readiness that we should be really proud of. There are many other such innovations that are happening around our city. For example, there are new institutions coming up. The Science Gallery Bengaluru, which I'm proud to be involved with, has emerged as an exciting and energizing space for young adults, which is critical for developing a scientific temper. Driven by the goal to encourage people to become more engaged with science and to foster a science culture, the Science Gallery Bengaluru is bringing together scientists and artists to showcase science in new and engrossing ways through hands-on experiments, science-based art installations, virtual tours and films, and is trying to establish a new kind of public space for science in the city. The Museum of Art and Photography, which is set to open uh, to its doors to the public in February next month, is seeking to democratize art and make it an enjoyable and relevant experience for everyone through digital interventions, including the creation of immersive art. MAP is leveraging the city's leading IT infrastructure to become one of the most technologically advanced museums in the world. MAP will collaborate with a range of in India's technological talent to take art to the people, just like we are trying to take science to the people, we are trying to take art to the people. And there is, it is no surprise that both the Science Gallery Bengaluru and MAP are both collaborating very closely to see how they can merge science and art and make this into a very, very unique experience. Of course, through its education and outreach department, MAP has already started creating and developing interactive cultural learning experience through workshops for school students and others. So 
I would like to basically con conclude by saying that Bengaluru is a city of citizens, by citizens, and for citizens. And to transform Bengaluru into a world-class, future-ready city, we need all the city's stakeholders, in most prominently its citizens, to think innovatively and be ready to, for change. If we really want Bengaluru to be future-ready, we will need to leverage the city's unique ecosystem that we have created over time. The science and technology um, excellence that we have evolved over time is definitely going to be very catalytic and important to transform Bang Bengaluru into a world-class future-ready city. As I mentioned earlier, data is going to be key to the way we leverage, analyze, and implement that data. So real-time data analytics that measures traffic, air quality, and city surveillance will be very key to the city's progress towards long-term sustainability, optimal mobility, as well as round-the-clock safety and security. And to do all of this, we have to reinvent Bengaluru, and more importantly, citizens need to reinvent their thinking. As uh, you know, Albert Einstein very correctly said, we cannot solve a problem by using the same kind of thinking that we used when we created them. So let's reinvent our thinking. Let's look at these very critical aspects of making our city future ready, which is really about making sure that we focus on pollution, mobility, and safety. These are the things that we need to really focus on. Once we do that, I think everything else will fall in place. This is a city that creates millions of jobs, so we don't have an unemployment problem. This is a city that creates enormous wealth because of knowledge, and that's a great way of creating wealth. So I think that's not something that we lack. This is a city that has huge resources, and I'm sure the chief minister will back me up in saying that we are one of the greatest uh, parts of this, this country that, creates the, that collects the maximum amount of taxes and GST because of the businesses that we have created. So let's leverage all this in the most resourceful and optimal way. Thank you very much, and I look forward to the rest of the day's deliberations. Thank you.